What is up guys? Before you watch this video, make sure to subscribe and click that notification icon so you can know exactly when a new McDoubles video comes out. So, with that being said, enjoy the video. What is up guys? McDoubles back again with a brand new episode and today we're going to be playing the Frost Warrior once again, hopefully making quite a bit more progress today. So, buckle in and I'll see you at the end of the video. Just wanted to give a quick shout out to uh, these two guys who decided to send me some stuff on the Laughing Skull Realm to help me. Uh, that's pretty, pretty helpful uh, since I don't have too much going on since not a lot of people typically play on these realms. But from uh, Sylvanus, with a very unique way of spelling the name, we got quite a lot of gear, including a trinket, which is the main thing I'll be keeping here right now. I'm going to leave it in the mailbox because I don't want to lose it. And then the Thunderbrow Ring, which I don't already have. So that's Chad Blinker that I was thinking of. So we'll put that on too. That's super useful. Very good. Thank you so much, man. And bags as well. 16 slot traveler's backpacks. Going to replace my brown leather satchel. Very, very good. And then what's good here sent me uh, a very cool thing as well and incredibly useful for my current level. So right now you can see I'm using Raxor's hammer, which is pretty good actually. And dwarves also have mace specialization, which makes using a 2H mace much better than other 2H weapons typically. But uh, despite that... I was given something that far surpasses Raxor's Hammer, and that's what you see in my inventory here, the Gizmotron Mega Chopper, which we talk a lot about on Chad Poinker, but even on this character, what it does for me is allows me to look very similar to that uh, almost dwarven-looking Frost Warrior picture that I, show. I showed in the thumbnail of the last video that I thought was so cool. I didn't base my character around that picture. I searched for it after the fact, but that's basically exactly what I was going for. So this allows me to look more like that just like that sword in the picture so very much enjoying it it's also just far superior uh to what i had so doing really good in that regard thank you so much to you two man appreciate it okay so i'm actually thinking about changing up my look i i really like that picture actually so no i'm not sure this is it uh, i'm thinking white hair first of all and i'm thinking that might still be the beard we go with that's decent I think we might just go with this. I really like it. It's kind of Santa Claus-esque, but uh, I, I actually think it's a pretty cool look. And now I just need to get my tabard made. I'm creating the guild right now. And uh, I think we'll have a the start, rather, of a pretty awesome looking character. Can I not jump up here? Really? Nope, can't. <laughs> All right, guys, you requested that I make a guild on Laughing Skull, so I decided to. Obviously, right now, since I don't even have an active level 60, uh, it's a leveling and social guild. But as we all progress to 60, hopefully we can continue to do dailies together. Hopefully, maybe raid together, do dungeons together, and queue for BGs. That is the long-term plan. So if you are interested uh, in, for now, making some friends, having a good time, and uh, also having a very good place to uh, duel me, if you want to fight me, that's going to be a good place to contact me and being in the guild, uh, then come on and join. Big Mac as you can see we have all the petitions on the uh, laughing skull realm so let's go ahead and do that all right there we go I am currently giving out free tabards to everybody who joins the guild and I have to admit the tabard looks sick guys uh, I'm a dwarf with a big beard so it's hard to see the full thing but um take my word for it here's a quick look there's actually a golden hammer right here maybe if i take my cape off you can see it from behind in my weapon as well so let's go ahead and do that so you can still barely see it because of my hair but it's a very it's simple but sometimes simple as best and i think the blue is a very perfect color especially for what i'm going for here so yeah very very happy with that and uh, i probably will still have some tabards so if you need one and you join the guild just let me know guys no big deal i'll set up the guild bank at some point too i actually think i'm just gonna do it right now i have a trinket selling on my other account for like 300 gold so once that sells i'll be able to have a lot more gold so it's not that big of a deal if i go ahead and do the guild tabard not the guild tabard uh the guild vault we'll do that and we'll just say uh, general tab and make it something relatively normal. I kind of like these little things, but they don't really work for me in terms of a general tab. Let's go, um, 
I want something probably bluish. Yeah, we'll do that. It matches what I want it to look like. There's my beautiful guild tabard up there. Looks very, very nice. So, uh, yeah. So I'll end up putting some gold in there and people of a certain rank will be able to do repairs. Uh, right now the ranks are as follows. We have the guild master, which is supposed to be the Big Mac. And that is me. I'm Big Mac of Big Mac. <laughs> oh, you have the Quarter Pounder. That's an officer. McDouble is the equivalent of a veteran. Cheeseburger is when you're a member. And uh, Nugget is when you are an initiate. So um, you can invite at any rank. But of course, uh, the member rank can edit their public notes. Um, and they can listen to, uh, well, the guild like normal. Uh, same with the Nugget. And the uh, McDouble, which is the veteran. You can do quite a bit more. You can view officer notes, create guild events, edit public notes. And what I'm going to end up doing is if you are at least a member, you'll be able to start repairing. And you'll be able to deposit all the way up to veteran, but only officers and uh, the GM will be able to probably withdraw. I might let uh, veterans actually and members withdraw one item a day because people were really good about that in my other guild and nobody really scammed. So I don't really see a problem with that, but I don't like the idea of the initiate being able to withdraw. So we'll... Uh, We'll see about that, but I hope you guys enjoy the guild. At the very least, you can join for the tabard. I don't know if you guys remember doing that uh, back in retail in the old days when you were like kids, teenagers, and uh, stuff like that. But I definitely used to join guilds just for the tabard, so <laughs> at least we have that going for us, right? Can somebody please tell me what this guy is doing? I'm just a little bit concerned. Just a little bit, though. But uh, I feel like I should be... <sighs> Far, far more concerned than I actually am, but that's what happens. You get desensitized when you play MMOs for so long. Okay, nice. We have a guy from the guild who uh, offered to run me through stocks to get these quests done, which is pretty nice of him because I'm kind of just AFKing right now. So it's going to be free XP. Very excited about that. Really appreciate it. I always love seeing large groups of mobs get pulled and just decimated. I feel like that's half the fun in WoW. It's just all the numbers you must be seeing and the fun that you have just knowing how powerful you are. He's looking like he's playing a pretty cool build too. I think it's a 2H tank build. Uh, he has Thunderclap and he's using a 2H weapon and seems like he has quite a bit of buffs. So uh, that's pretty cool. I, I play a 2H tank myself on one of my characters from the past but it's a holy 2h tank a crusader i did a video on that and i'll put that up on the screen now but yeah pretty cool i don't know what those swords around him are though uh it looks like blade master okay he has the legendary enchant <laughs> he has the legendary enchant that is pretty cool oh and we just got a defias renegade ring that's gonna be better than the ring of the moon right now so that is pretty great for us as well wow that actually works out I love when I get gear that I can show you guys while I'm already recording something. It just, mm, just works out so well. Okay, guys. So, uh, as you can see from my bags, we got a lot of items. Uh, mana potions. I might keep the mana potions. But um, other than that, we have a lot of green gear. Some vendor trash, but a lot of green gear, actually. And um, I'm going to put all of this on the auction house to help low levels out. So they have stuff to go for and buy if they don't get too lucky with uh, mobs. So uh, look for that. I'm going to put them for... Things like this. So bristle bark gloves, it recommends nine silver. I can vendor it for six silver. I'm going to put it in there for exactly, basically within one copper of what it wanted me to. So it's super cheap stuff, guys. I basically don't make anything off it, but you guys have some cool stuff to go for so you actually have items. Cause I mean, bristle bark gloves are really, really good. <laughs> so uh, keep that in mind. Look out for that if you want some free gear at the low levels. All right, I can turn all three of these quests in now. And apparently I can turn that one in too. And uh, I think there's another one I have to turn in in Red Ridge. But that was a lot of XP. I think we're level 29. Okay, I thought it was 30, but 29. Okay, guys, level 30 with this quest. And uh, with that, I'm actually going to put two points into... Uh, well, I'm going to do it into Shatter again. So I decided to go ahead and put those original three points in Shatter into Frostbite. It wasn't in my original build, but I'm going to try it because I could always replace uh, maybe improved Mortal Strike, Ice Shards, maybe actually some other kind of utility talent. I'll have to go back and look at the video for my original build. But I really like the idea of Frostbite and Cone of Cold. It might not be worth it though, but it works really, really well with Shatter. So uh, maybe... 
So actually, maybe it is worth it. But uh, because we're level 30, I can go ahead and get another spell. So let's go ahead and see what is worth taking right now. Maybe Hand of Freedom. But between Charge and my Slows, it might turn out that we don't need that. I haven't really found myself needing it. But I also haven't found anybody with a crazy kiting build. So maybe there is somebody out there that can kite even my build. We have everything we currently need from the Frost Mage Tree. Oh, we don't have Ice Block. There we go, guys. I didn't even know I could get Ice Block right now. But that is certainly iconic. Let's go ahead. Oh, heck yeah. <laughs> that is so good and matches everything I want this character to be. I'm, oh, I love that. Every Frost spell just adds to it. Nice. <laughs> We have two guildies right here that uh, want to 1v1 me, but they're both cat builds and they both have ferocious bites because uh, they are level 33 and you get it at 32. Now, the Frosty Paws cat build that they're playing has been around since the beginning of the game, of the server rather, and it is a top, it's a top tier build at level 30 for sure, and I... Uh, I don't expect to beat it solely because it's just a better build, I would assume. However, I am curious to see how well we can do against it. And that's what's most important to me. Not to win, but to see how well my build can do against it. So, uh, when, as soon as their rest sickness goes away, we will we'll start it up. Okay, guys, let's begin. Can we beat a 1900 HP cat? I don't think so, but we will try. We will definitely try. He gets the opener, but we do have a trinket, so... Okay. Gonna go ahead right off the bat, get that stun off, and get that frost shock off. He has level advantage. Got the overpower. Frost Nova. It missed. Overpower. Nice. Cone of Cold. Frost Nova, charge. Get that Ren back up. It resisted. Oh, it's, it's on. Pop the Divine Protection. And the Overpower might kill here. It does not. And we got him, guys. Okay. Good duel. So we're going to duel the other guy now. I did have to use the uh, Divine Protection, but I was able to kite him, similar to how Frost DKs used to play against Warriors back in Cataclysm. I don't want to have to use Ice Block. I feel like that's a little bit bad manners. It's kind of like using Divine Shield in a duel. World PvP is different. Anything goes, but... Uh, Alright, so he'll duel me when he's ready. I did not have to Trinket, which was good. Alright, Frost Nova right off the bat. Alright. I'm gonna Stun. Rend. Get an SS off. I think we can... I think we've got this, guys. I really do. I'm going to heal right here. Get that overpower off. And he's going to die. Bam! Got him! Okay! Had no mana by the end of that one. GD, good duel, man. Good duel. Okay, the build did pretty good against the cat build. Uh, I think it's because they didn't have a stun. Uh, I did have my trinket, but uh, yeah, it seemed like there was not much they could do. I'm assuming neither of them had healing touch, because if you look at the talent points here in the feral tree, you have the predatory strike. So every time they get a ferocious bite or a rake off, not a rake, a rip off, uh, they will basically make their healing touch instant cast. And that's going to be a big part of playing a Feral Druid. But it didn't seem like it went off. So I don't think they had it. Either that or they just could not build combo points against me because of all my CC. Alright, that's that guys. Went pretty well. Alright guys, we're going to go ahead and do the second Rebellion quest and the Bad Medicine quest. It shouldn't be too difficult. Uh, these creatures are uh, only level 32, these uh, humans that I have to fight here. And as you can see, they die incredibly fast. And since we're rested, we get a whole 2300 XP per kill. So I'm going to farm these things, uh, get my jungle remedies, and uh, kill the Curzon jungle fighters. I've got to be honest with you guys, I think Cone of Cold is definitely the MVP so far. I'm going to get in a fight real quick and show you it, but... It just does so much damage. It does more damage than my uh, Frost Shock. It's on a slightly longer cooldown though, but honestly, it's kind of irrelevant. So when I have to choose between the two, I see myself choosing 
Cone of Cold way more often than not. The damage is crazy, and with the talents I chose, it even has a chance to uh, chill my targets, freeze them like this. So yeah, it's actually really, really crazy uh, just being able to kite my targets back with the bleed up on them and kind of almost play like a Frost Death Knight, like I was talking about earlier from the old days, like Cataclysm Frost Death Knights. They would spam a spell called Howling Blast, which in this case can very much be compared to Cone of Cold. And they would just kite around uh, their targets who were perma-slowed, essentially, like warriors and rogues. So you see, what I do is I just freeze all of my targets. And then I apply bleeds to them. And then when the slow runs out, I just cone of cold them again. Alright, this one's gonna die now. Huge crits on them in the back. That's what I wanted to showcase, guys. So as you can see, those big cone of cold crits off of the shatter proc... Uh, maybe we can get it again here. There we go. It's huge. And now we're getting ganked by just about everything. Make sure to get these wrens up. Because they do heal like crazy. And I'll kite them around. I'm missing everything because they're a little bit too high level, unfortunately. And then they heal. Alright, we can get this one. No big deal. And I can get this one right here, actually, too, now that I look at it. I can still get him. He's dead, too. And we'll just be kiting for a moment. I'm going to go ahead and get this heal off. Ah, uh, that, that was cutting it close, guys. Cutting it close, but we have the Divine Protection up. All right. Go for the big crits. Didn't get a crit that time. I hate these little things, man. They, they really do... Like, I can't even see that they're there. They're kind of blending in with the other guys. I'm going to get a Cone of Cold off. No big deal. All right, go in for the kill on that one. Well, my friends, this is looking dire for us. We're fine, though. All right. Pretty good, pretty good. And we'll just run away. Oh, God. I swear, it's STV at Nam, but in a different way. It has nothing to do with the players. It has to do with, with the creatures, man. I didn't have enough mana for the wind shear there. Oh, we gained the level! That was clutch! We gained the level off the rend killing one of the guys in the back. Oh, that's so good. Alright, gonna go for the crit. Man, it's missing. Everything is too high level. Parrying my rend. Alright, I'm going to go for the heal now that they're slowed. Alright, there we go. This should be the end of the fight here. Last time, I'm going to go for the crit. Got it. There we go. Nice. All those dead bodies. God, and even more, man. It never stops. Alright, I'll see you guys when this ends. <laughs> All right, guys, all of them are dead. I'm going to go ahead and loot all of them. But yeah, uh, we did gain the level there, which helped. Uh, these things are cutting it close. We are lower level than every single NPC we are currently fighting in large groups. That's definitely going to make it more difficult than average. Nonetheless, we were able to beat them all. And uh, I think the build performs pretty well. Uh, I... <laughs> If I'm honest, I can't wait to find somebody out in the open at some point because I really don't think I can lose. Yeah, so for some reason there's about 50 of the medicine men, but there's only like three Curzon jungle fighters. But it wants me to kill 15 of them and only collect seven of the things from this guy. So very, very good quest mechanics, Blizzard. Love it. Absolutely love it. All right, we are finally done. That was a painful quest. Maybe STV was not the right time. You know, for us, level 30 at the time, felt like it'd be pretty okay, but uh, that was actually pretty difficult with how much they swarmed me, and I didn't even have to fight another player, and it was hard. Okay, guys, so we went ahead, and we turned in both of those quests, and we got level 32 in the process, and we picked up Cold Snap. Now, 
Cold Snap was not in our original plan for this build, but, but as you can see, I am improvising as I level, uh, just to make it a smoother experience, as most of the talents needed to make my build good don't come until about level 40 to 55. So, Cold Snap is going to, when activated, finish the cooldown of all of my Frost Mage spells. That's actually very, very good, and I might want to consider having that in my main build. That's going to refresh the cooldown of my Ice Block, believe it or not, my Frost Nova, and my Cone of Cold. And when I get Ice Barrier, it's going to refresh the cooldown of that as well, which is very, very strong. So, hopefully we can uh, put that to good use. Alright, and so I feel like a lot of people would typically just go ahead and vendor off some of this stuff, as I don't think they would think it's worth their time to put them on the auction house. I'm going to do it anyway. And the reason I'm going to do it anyway, and I just completely did that wrong, but the reason I'm going to do it anyway is so uh, new players have gear to buy. Uh, so once again, I'm going to be doing that. I think that's probably the healthiest way to do it. So keep in mind, guys, that uh, if you do play on the server, make sure you sell all the little things that you get. It's totally worth doing uh, just to help other people. Okay, guys, that's going to be the end of this episode. Uh, in the next episode, hopefully we make it past level 40. That's going to be the goal. Uh, keep in mind, come and join the new Big Mac Guild on the Laughing Skull server. We just started it today. I've only been recruiting for like maybe the last five hours or so. And uh, that's been half AFK at the same time. So free guild tabbers in the bank. You have that going for you. So, so I will see you guys in the next video. McDoubles out.